Has your class ever made the teacher cry? What happened? Angry tears. Had a history teacher one year, really good teacher. He had had a teenage son who had ended himself, and after he took some time off, he came back to work. Standard class clown kid started acting up in his class. Teacher asks him to go into the hallway so he can speak with him privately. We heard their exchange get a little heated, but this kid just cranked it up to 11, and insinuated teacher's kid was right to end themselves with a father like him. Heard that kid bounce off some lockers about a second after. Teacher came back into the room with angry tears and told one of us to call the school resource officer. It became a big hullabaloo and the teacher ended up suspended for the rest of the year. At the time, I thought it was crazy he would shove the kid like that. Fifteen years later in some real world experience, I'm surprised that's all he did. There are some things you don't say even in the heat of the moment. Anything like this is absolutely included in that. That kid did not own the teacher as much as he thought he did. He was just the worst kind of person for a bit. And in the kid's defense, they probably didn't really know what they were saying either. Like, they knew what they were saying, but I mean in a, uh, I don't know, more worldly sense. They didn't really understand the impact of what they were saying. As OP insinuated, that's something you only really learn with real-world experience. And I think the teacher knew that too, or else they probably would have gotten a little worse than just a shove. Story 2. Multiple times. We were a terrible class. She was our 6th grade teacher. Our school had this odd system where you had a homeroom teacher for most of the day, but then rotated around to other teachers for just a few classes. Our homeroom teacher was also the music teacher, and for some reason during music class, all hell would break loose. She went on vacation for a week and came back with a bad sunburn around the eyes, so we would call her Mrs. Raccoon. It caused her to get more tanning done. During one music class, she really had to go to the washroom, so she left for about four seconds and a fight broke out between a boy and a girl. The girl took the boy's head and threw it through a snare drum. He got stuck in there. She came back to thinking he was dead. Eventually, she had a mental breakdown mid-class and ran out into the hallway crying. The seventh grade teacher saw this and instead of consoling her, walked in and just let us have it. I'll never forget that day. He said we were spoiled jerks for treating a teacher who only ever wanted to help us like trash. He screamed that if he had a teacher like her when he was a kid, he would do everything he could to keep her. Yelled that if we kept acting this way, we were in for a life of disappointment, brought on by our own rampant incompetence. It worked. Some of us cried, but everyone felt horrible, and we were all nice to her for the remaining year. Now I understand, shouldn't yell at children for a variety of reasons, but... I mean, it kind of gets hard to say that when you hear about something like this and it's like, oh, actually really letting them have it did teach them stuff. And it probably had a lot to do with how the teacher said it too, admittedly. I feel like that's really important. But the fact that that one moment was able to teach the kids to be nicer to their teacher and probably just to humanity in general after that is pretty incredible. And yeah, OP, your class does sound like a bunch of spoiled jerks. So, teacher was right. Story 3. I remember in high school getting a teacher fresh out of uni. He was the best, super passionate about teaching, and would often incorporate music and comedy into his teaching to make it more interesting. Almost everyone in the class loved him for it. There were three footy players who would always play up in class, though, and the teacher spent extra attention on them, trying to get them just as excited about learning as the rest of the class, but they were simply too cool to pay attention. One day, they took it too far. I can't remember the exact details, but I do remember that one of the footy players threw a chair as a joke, either at another student or maybe the teacher himself, and it just broke the poor guy. He lost it at the unruly students, and you could see the pure frustration in his face. He just wanted to teach, but these few students were hellbent on ruining it for everyone. He ended up just leaving the classroom in tears, and everyone in the class quickly turned against the kids who threw the chair. I always like hearing stuff like this when the students support the teacher. Basically just knowing that these kids are jerks and the teacher did nothing wrong. Story 4. This is a long one, but here goes. When I was about 14, 15, my school had an awesome young science teacher. Fresh out of uni, eager to do well in his first job, passionate about his subject, and always staying late to help out the kids who needed the extra help. Unfortunately, he was super timid and shy, and not very good at handling behavioral issues. Naturally, the crappier kids, and even the ones you would expect better from, found it fun to completely take advantage of this, and it soon became a common game to just see who could do their best at making his life hell. I never saw him cry myself, but I did see him get pushed to his limits, and one day I heard he had a bit of a breakdown. I can't remember exactly what I was told happened but he fled a classroom on the verge of tears, and some of the other teachers needed to step in to get the class back under control. Anyway, one Monday we found out he had passed away the day before from an undetected heart problem. His father went to his house the previous Sunday morning when he didn't turn up for their golf session, and found him dead in his bed at 24. Needless to say, all of the kids who tormented him felt 
awful about it. One girl in particular confided in me about how she felt so terrible. She knew he was a great teacher, but she joined in with the pack, and now she had to live with the knowing this young, kind teacher died, and all she had ever done was contribute to making his life difficult. A lesson for young Redditors. Treat your teachers well. They've dedicated themselves to giving you your education, something many people in this world aren't lucky enough to have. They're people like you and me. People just trying to do their jobs well. My mother is an English teacher, and the stress kids put her under resulted in her mental and physical health declining to the point of needing to leave the job. Again, teachers are people. Mothers, fathers, sons, and daughters. Treat them like crap and you will grow up to regret it and you'll deserve every ounce of the guilt you feel. Story 5. In my fifth grade, my class was always extremely nasty to every substitute teacher that came in. They'd act out doing and saying stupid stuff, and though we never actually saw any of them cry, our regular teacher told us on multiple occasions that we'd left the substitute in tears after class was done. I hated every time there was a substitute because it would always become a crap show. Also, in middle school, we had a teacher that started out extremely chill. She said she didn't believe in yelling at students. Unfortunately, though, a lot of these same little craps from my fifth grade class were in this class, too, plus new ones. I don't remember what the cause was exactly, but one day she just snapped and screamed at us for a good ten minutes. She definitely believed in yelling at students after that. It's one of the few things from middle school I remember clear as day. Story 6. I had a French teacher once. We were her first class since becoming a teacher. Lovely woman, but many of us suspected she had mental health problems. Always very quiet and mousy, and she always came in looking a bit messy. For example, hair not brushed and makeup a bit smudged. There were these two girls who would just torment her. They hid pickled muscles around the classroom and were just these loud, obnoxious jerks. Long story short, turns out the teacher's mom had just died, and on top of the stress of managing a class with some real horrible kids, she had a nervous breakdown and never came back. About two years later, I was going to a concert, and saw her begging for money outside of a train station. Just felt so horrible seeing what she'd been reduced to, all because of some nasty freaking kids that just pushed her and pushed her. Story 7. No, but once in chemistry, the teacher, Coach Bert, stopped writing on the board, looked straight ahead, and mumbled, I could probably blow my brains all over this chalkboard and y'all wouldn't even notice. The only people that heard him were me and the girl I was talking to. I responded, Coach, I think that's a dry erase board. Nobody uses chalk anymore. And he laughed, which made me feel slightly less concerned. Story 8. I'm the teacher who cried, but I guess I can still share something. My class noticed one morning that I wasn't myself, and one kid asked me during recess whether I was okay. Normally I wouldn't share about my personal life, but I told my student that my grandma had passed away that morning. At the end of the day before I dismissed the class, the class committee handed me a sympathy card with really sweet condolence messages from every student. I couldn't keep it in and started bawling. Oh, we needed a happy one, didn't we? What a nice little oasis of joy and empathy in the midst of all this. What an incredible class of kids, OP. I'm sure you taught them well. Story 9. In middle school science, I had a teacher who was always so sweet. She was an older woman, and she always made sure we had materials for her class, often at her own expense. I remember she went out and bought like 20 plastic pencil cases and filled them with pencils, rulers, erasers, everything we would need. One day, though, some of the kids decided to throw a few of the pencil cases across the room. They snapped some of the rulers and just generally broke a lot of the things she provided for us, while she stepped out for five minutes to talk to another teacher. When she came back, she started crying, and I remember feeling so bad for her. She gave the class little pieces of candy after, apologizing for losing control and getting emotional. We were the ones who should have been apologetic. She was so sweet to us, even though the class was full of little demon children. Story 10. The whole class knew our teacher loves us so much. On her birthday, we decided to surprise her once she entered the classroom after the flag ceremony. We divided into two groups. Some of us are together with the teacher during the flag ceremony, and some are waiting for the flag ceremony to end and are hiding in certain places in the classroom. The teacher had no idea of what was actually happening, and when she arrived together with some of our classmates, we started singing happy birthday to her. She was so shocked, you can clearly see that she was trying to hold in her tears. It was the class's most successful birthday surprise. Story 11. When I was in high school, we were misbehaving as a whole group, just making noise, not listening, and messing around and finding just about everything that was happening far too funny. Nothing major. A few of us got sent out to stand in the corridor until she got a handle on things. When she came out to speak to us, one dude was leaning up against the doorframe with his hand, and upon realizing it, we couldn't contain our laughter at this point. She decided to leave us out there and stormed back into the class, slamming the door. It was at this point the dude screamed with the force of a thousand sons. I hadn't heard anything quite like it. 
Teacher comes back out instantly, steam bellowing out of her ears, ready to completely destroy our childhoods. She turned to the kid and noticed the end of his finger hanging off, instantly realizing she'd shut it in her door. Her mood changed just as quickly, and she broke down into tears. I would have felt bad, but it just topped off the list of things I shouldn't have been laughing at already. Story 12. It was the end of the day, and a whole bunch of us nine-year-olds were getting ready to go home, when this kid who was always trying to make trouble started arguing with the teacher about the next day's homework, and she made some comment about his mom, and then he made a rude joke about the teacher's mom, and she burst into tears and screamed her mom was dead. We sat in silence for like five minutes while the teacher cried. Story 13. I'm a college teacher in the UK. Absolutely love my job. Love helping the kids I teach and love helping them reach their uni courses. Never really had many issues with most of my classes, but I had this one class that was real lazy. Never did their work and etc. They got a real crap result back one lesson. Average mark was like 30%. I said something in passing and a student made a comment about how I shouldn't guilt trip them. I explained how I felt like I was working harder than they were, and I felt like I cared more about their result than they did, despite the fact that they would be going to uni. At the time, I was going through a breakup and was living in my car for a few days, and I cried then in front of the class. Awful moment, professionally speaking. Story 14. In fifth grade, we had a psychotic substitute teacher, probably in his late 50s. At the beginning of class, everyone was goofing off, and he immediately shut us down by screaming, Shut up at us! And he was shaking furiously. We all stayed silent after that because he legit freaked us out. But we came to the conclusion that he was hearing voices in his head. Because about 20 minutes into class, he stopped talking abruptly and screamed at us again at the top of his lungs that we would regret being so loud. But no one had uttered a word. He then stomped over to the desk, violently swept everything off, muttering the entire time to himself, then went to the back of the room and turned all of the lights off. We were all terrified at this point. He silently paced around the back of the room for a while, then went back to the front and slapped the chalkboard. His next words were what I remember the most clearly. He was violently shaking as he yelled, I'm gonna tell your teacher how horrible of a class you all are when she gets back, and I'll make sure she burns you up. To hell with all of you. He threw himself back into the teacher's chair and started sobbing. One of my classmates managed to sneak out and get the principal. He was escorted from the classroom a few minutes later, and we all had to individually go to the principal's office and recount what happened. Apparently, he had just gotten a divorce and kinda lost it. He was fired the same day. Honestly, I don't think we actually did anything to warrant his initial reaction. He just snapped. Yeah, from the sounds of what OP is saying, this guy was not doing too hot that day, and probably wasn't for a while. It definitely sucks that the class gets caught in the crossfire there. Like, kids can be bad, but this man sounded unhinged. I hope he's doing better now, though. Story 15. Yes. In year 5, age 9 to 10, we had the small, pretty cool teacher take over our class because our usual teacher was out doing something. One day, we would not shut up. Something happened that got us kids all excited, and I was just a-doodling. Looked up to see the teacher just run out of the class in floods of tears. I then realized just how little attention the class was giving her and how much they cared. Because it took several minutes for everyone to notice she was gone, and then went right back to talking. I felt really bad for that teacher, because she was the only teacher in our whole year who got no respect from the students. Story 16. It wasn't my class, but my twin brother's class when we were in grade 7. We went to a public school, which was full of delinquents. His class was especially bad. They had a substitute teacher take over one of their classes for about a month, and one of the kids thought it would be hilarious if he pretended to be severely intellectually disabled. Looking back on it now, it was horrible, but at the time, everyone thought it was hilarious. He would moan words, throw books, water, spit on the floor and dribble. The class played along with it, but they would all howl with laughter at him. The sub kept saying things like, he can't control it, stop bullying him. It got to a point where he was being especially bad with his disability and everyone in the class kept laughing. She ended up crying in the middle of class and later quit after she found out he'd been pretending the entire time. This sucks. The teacher had a lot of empathy, clearly, and was willing to work with whatever, and the kids really took advantage of that without knowing it, really. So, yeah, it just kind of sucks, because, look, you're in grade 7, I get it. Those kinds of pranks or whatever, they, they happen. And in grade 7, yeah, they're funny. And at that point in your life, there's no way to know how truly screwed up what you're doing is. Both the faking a disability like that, and also abusing the teacher's empathy. So yeah, that's why I say it just kind of sucks. Story 17. This still makes me rage. 
ninth grade history teacher. Never had him myself, but a bunch of friends did. Was a good guy, but his wife gave birth to triplets over summer break, and his stress level and sleep deprivation was obvious, even to a lot of us kids. One day, a group of craphead popular girls called the school pretending to be his wife, and said there had been a car accident involving his newborns. His classroom was next to mine at the time, so he came in in a panic to ask my teacher to watch his class before literally sprinting down the hall. I don't know what happened, but he never came back. Those kids broke him. Okay, ninth grade, you should know a little better than this. This is just evil. I don't know any other word for it. This is really, really awful behavior. And I'm not saying these girls are going to be terrible people for their whole lives. No, I'm not saying that at all. But they should really know better by this point in their lives. I have nothing but sympathy for this teacher. I can't imagine what that would even feel like. And I hope I never have to. Story 18. It's happened more than once in different classes, different subjects, different teachers, and for different reasons. 1. My Algebra 2 class sophomore year made my teacher cry out of frustration, just because we treated her with such little respect. She deserved it, not gonna lie, and refused to listen when she told us to just be quiet and listen to her lessons. 2. My French 4 class senior year was obviously a class full of seniors, and there was only one French teacher at our high school, so we had all been with her for four years. On our final day, we gave her a book containing memories from our four years of French together. We did this together outside of class, so it was a complete surprise. She read it and cried on the spot. I missed that class. 3. My junior year English teacher was obsessed with the book The Great Gatsby, and she prides herself over how good it is, trying to push that opinion onto her students, too. I just dropped down from the AP English class because I didn't want to fail, and was feeling pretty sour about the book I was forced to crawl through at a snail's pace. In my essay on the thoughts on the book, I trashed the book in every way I could think of, staying within the rubric for full points, of course. I'm unsure why my essay itself brought my teacher to tears. After all, it was just my review of the book, and I never attacked my teacher personally. Looking back on it, I do feel a little bad, because it was obviously something she really enjoyed, and some angsty little crap has no right to drag something like that through the mud. I want to say, after number one, I honestly thought OP was just going to be a jerk. Like, I was fully expecting OP to be some kind of jerk kid who's like, ah, all teachers suck, and then two and three completely turned me around. Two, because that's a really sweet thing to do for a teacher. And three, because OP recognizes at the end, it's like, yeah, that was not a great thing for me to do. And that's character growth. Proud of you, OP. Story 19. When I was in middle school, we had an older teacher with a larger body and very thin legs. As such, she somewhat resembled a hen. It didn't help that she had a bit of a sagging under chin, and shorter hair that looked like the top of a chicken's head and a very pronounced nose. We had a new kid in class who appeared to have been held back a few times and had now landed in that class. The guy was a jerk in general, but the day he called her a chicken and then proceeded to mimic a clucking chicken complete with arm wings made me realize that she was probably aware of the likeness and may have dealt with people joking about it before. She immediately started crying and fled the room. Instruction was taken over by one of the vice principals for the rest of class, who used that time to admonish us on the dangers of being jerks. Later in college, I was taking an anthropology elective in an auditorium-sized lecture hall. The professor had a very thick Indian accent, but was still very much understandable. During a lecture on dialects and the concept of texts, she commented about how these can lead to miscommunications between different regional groups. And one student yelled from the back of the lecture hall, Oh, so it's hard when you can't understand what the frick someone is saying? The professor got quiet for a minute before muttering, I have no words. Class is dismissed. She gathered her stuff and left the lecture hall. I felt so bad for her. The next lecture, some higher up in her department came along and addressed the class about how the level of disrespect was absurd at an institution of higher learning. I'm not even sure if the guy who said it was there. I had a few takeaways from these incidents. First, as crappy as middle school kids can be, nobody joined in on the joke with jerk one. And jerk number two caught a lot of, what the hell is wrong with you looks in the lecture hall. Second, in the case of the college professor, her level of professionalism was astounding. The next class after the higher up was done talking to us, she continued as if nothing had happened. Even when it happened, she gathered herself enough to properly dismiss the class. It was inspirational in a surreal kind of way. No, I'm absolutely not going to do an Indian accent there. It seems in very poor taste, both in context of the story and just in general. That first one, uh, definitely rough when teaching younger children. Middle school, these things are all, like, they're just phasing out of being ex not accepted, but expected, you know what I mean? Where it's like, yeah, kids can do and say really stupid and hurtful things and not really know it. But it's getting to that point where it's like, maybe they shouldn't, though. Like, maybe they should know better. Especially if this guy's been held back multiple times. Yikes. So yeah, that one sucks, and I'm glad no one joined in. For the second one, that's just unbelievable. Get the hell out of the class. Like, I don't know who you thought you were impressing or 
I don't know. Gross behavior. Don't do that. That simple. Anyway, that is all the stories we have for today. I wish we had a few more of the happier ones. There was a lot of kind of stressful and frustrating ones in here, but oh well. It's Reddit. You get what you get. If you have any stories, especially happier ones, throw them in the comments below. For now, though, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.